Hello and welcome to FPGA Inside Out Session 2. In this session, we will talk about FIFO. We will explain FIFO internal logic and functional principles. Then we will discuss how we can build a self-checking test bench for our FIFO design. In order to demonstrate all the concepts, we will be using a tool called HDL Gadgets. HDL Gadgets is Python written frontend that allows human in the loop interaction with a simulator and enhanced visualization of simulated HDL code. For a start, let me mention this classic Clifford Cummings paper that explains fundamentals of FIFO design. Although this paper mainly focuses on dual clock FIFO, the logic of our single clock FIFO that we'll explore in this video uses the same principles. Let's start scenario 1 called single FIFO. FIFO is a memory with a special write-read access pattern. FIFO consists of dual port RAM and control logic. First, let's reset our FIFO. Data will be written into FIFO when up valid and up ready are high. This is also called push operation. Written data remains registered on the FIFO output port, and to request the next data from FIFO, we need to do POP operation. POP happens when both down valid and down ready are high. Write pointer is incrementing each time when push happens. Read pointer is incrementing each time when pop happens. Pointers are going in circles. When they reach their maximum value, they wrap back to zero. Pointers are used to address write and read ports of dual port RAM. These star symbols are just for visualization of live transactions. FIFO design doesn't have logic to track transactions individually. But FIFO can still guarantee integrity between data pushed into the FIFO and the data popped from FIFO. This is done via generation of full and empty conditions that prevent rewriting of data that has not been popped and prevent the same data from being popped more than once. Logic that generates full and empty conditions also relies on values from write and read pointers. If values of pointers match completely, then FIFO is empty. If FIFO is empty, down valid is low. When down valid is low, pop operation cannot happen, even if down ready is high. Pointers contain an extra most significant bit that is not used for addressing RAM, but help distinguish between empty and full conditions. If lower bits of write and read pointers match, but the most significant bits are different, that indicates that FIFO is full. If FIFO is full, upready is low. When upready is low, push operation cannot happen, even if upvalid is high. Please find synthesizable RTL code of FIFO that we have just explored in HDL slash scenario one folder. Let's talk about verification of FIFO. Before we start, I would like to bring one diagram from Yuri Panchal article published on Hubber.com. This diagram demonstrates how several engineers, in particular RTL, verification, model and physical engineer, are collaborating within a team. We can see that RTL engineer together with physical engineer produce synthesizable RTL code, while model engineer develops transaction accurate model of the design. Simulation is in the central place of the design workflow. Simulation ensures consistency between the model and the RTL code, 
and it is a responsibility of the verification engineer. In the next scenario, we will make a self-checking test bench for our FIFO design that demonstrates this concept in action. Let's start scenario 2 now. First, we do reset to bring scenario components to their initial state. One new component we can see here is the model Q. We can push data in the tail of the queue. We can pop data from the front of the queue. Model Q is transaction accurate or untimed representation of our FIFO. Since our FIFO RTL drives valid ready bus signals, we can make it generate push and pop conditions to drive our model as well. When both up valid and up ready high, up data get pushed not just in the RTL design but into the model as well. When both down valid and down ready high, we get data popped not just from the RTL design but from the model as well. So another extra component needed here is the monitor that compares outputs between the RTL design and the model. As long as valid data from RTL design matches the data stored in the head of the model queue, we can see clean non-error indication on the monitor block. Let's take a look at the system Verilog code of the model. Now let's assume that there is a new design specification that requires our design behave in such a way that every transaction that is pushed into the block input shall be replicated two times at the block output. The model engineer can easily modify the model to reflect this new functionality. Now, once the model is changed, we can see that every input transaction appears twice in the model queue. Clearly, the model is no longer consistent with the RTL, and we can see that the monitor shows data mismatch. At this point, RTL engineer needs to fix the RTL code of the design so that it behaves according to the new design requirements. And we will come back to this in the next video, when we will take a deeper dive into valid ready handshaking protocol. That's it for now. You are welcome to install HDL gadgets and experiment with these scenarios yourself. Please don't forget to subscribe, leave your comments below or ask your questions. Thanks for watching.